have a great year. The fuck did I say that for? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? You got Kramzer here with Joe and Jason. Welcome back to Listography. We are tackling 1973 album of the year. So what's going on in 73? Country as a whole is kind of settled down, coming out of the Vietnam era. Spirit of the counterculture is pretty subdued. It's soaked into the suburbs a little bit, and that will play more into the mid and late 70s. But right now, 73, rock and roll is really kind of working as a corporate operation. A lot of people are making money. There's a lot of big tours. But the money making kind of hits a snag with a record shortage crisis, which is due to the oil crisis. So everyone's freaking out. They can't get stuff out in time. But the stuff they get out is excellent again. Sorry to, you know, beat a dead horse, but these years are phenomenal. There's 20 albums every year off just the top of our heads while we're going into it that are continuing. Tenders. You know, as far as I was talking about the big tours, you've got Zeppelin breaking the Beatles attendance record in Tampa Bay. And then the music styles are getting a little more experimental. You're getting more prog elements. You're getting some more jazz, straight up jazz um, and R&B and soul. You're getting more broadening of horizons and sort of what the idea of creating song structure or creating an album is with Dark Side of the Mood and Tubular Bells, some really just heavily progressive studio work there synthesizers are really creeping in this year i think um, a lot of bands are starting to use them some heavier some not but i really think there's an interesting part here probably a little in 72 and 73 now the rock and roll band isn't quite as popular there's a lot more singer songwriter stuff going on you've got diana ross al green elton john carly simon roberta flack stevie wonder Cher. just a lot of people coming in and you know you're getting a little bit more of a narrow uh, voice and vision with the albums that are being put out. But the bands are still making a mark. I mean, The Who, Zeppelin, a lot of the classics are putting out albums this year. So I've got my five ready to go, and let's kick it off, guys. All right, this was a ridiculous year for me. Unfortunately, maybe for the variety of the show, it's kind of holdover artists for the most part from last year. My runners up are going to be Countdown to Ecstasy by Steely Dan. Maybe their best album kind of before they went right into the studio to kind of become a studio band. They're still still rocking pretty hard on, on this one. I have Stevie Wonder's Inner Visions, which in a regular year would be number one. Incredible follow-up to Talking Book, uh, Living for the City, just completely jam-packed with hits. Uh, I have Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. They don't even win. You know, Led Zeppelin album not winning for me is, it's tough. So, you know, it's a good year. And then I have Quadrophenia by The Who, also not winning, which that's my favorite Who album. So it would take a massive achievement by one of my favorite artists of all time to dethrone them. And that is going to be Elton John by Yellow Brick Road. And their dealings with stressed envelope to David. The grand prize I mean, you you know the hits, you know the songs. Candle in the Wind, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Benny and the Jets. Those, I guess, were the, the big three, you know, all kind of canon songs in the singer, songwriter, rock. AOR kind of format. But there's so much more on this album. You have Funeral for a Friend. Uh, which Ellen John just decided to dabble in Prague and just totally nail it, never do it again. But you know, just because he could, he did. That's kind of the theme of this one. He's just everywhere. He's all over the place. He's doing fake Jamaican stuff. He's doing like British kind of dance hall. He does some country western, Roy Rogers, Social Disease, uh, you know, the anthem, Saturday Night, It's All Right for Fighting. The hits are great. And the non-hits are great, too. Uh, the song has no title. I've seen that movie, too. Harmony, which is maybe his most underrated song. Incredible stuff. His band sounds great, which is, I think, an underrated aspect of Elton John. He's great. But his band is, is just so tight and so good on everything that it just elevates the music. And uh, I don't even know if this is my favorite Elton John. It's definitely in the top two or three. It's just an undeniable record of just you know, greatness from Sir Elton. My top five, it's uh, kind of difficult when one of your all-time favorite artists puts out two records in a year, especially when you're trying to put together lists like this. It makes it pretty difficult. And especially when those records 
land right on the cusp of making it or not. So I was really, really torn between Band on the Run and Red Rose Speedway. I only had room for one on the list. When I did the McCartney listography, I had Band on the Run ranked second and Red Rose Speedway ranked third. And I came very, very close to flipping that and putting Red Rose Speedway on the list. I think it's super underrated, probably his most underrated record. But I'm sticking with the original order. Red Rose Speedway is my number six. Band on the Run's number five. Some other runners up, uh, some of the usual suspects for me. I've got Mott by Mott the Hoople. I've got A Wizard, A True Star by Todd Rundgren. Uh, kind of his sharp left turn away from making pop records. I think if he stayed on the path of something, anything, he might today be known as one of the all-time great singer-songwriters, but he made this psychedelic stream of consciousness record and it's a wild ride and it's awesome and then i've got a couple of debut records uh, i've got the first record from queen i think it is an extremely underrated record one of the best queen records i don't think it gets enough credit i think it's awesome it's not really like any other queen record uh, but then at my number one of 1973 maybe a little bit of a surprise i'm going with closing time by tom waits and their dealings with stressed envelope to David. Is the grand prize His first record, just a really, really great singer-songwriter record. Some I'm not like a, a diehard Tom Waits fan. Some of his newer stuff I can kind of take it or leave it, but I really, really like when he's kind of just in this more basic singer-songwriter mode. The writing is great on here. The performances are great. It's got a really cool vibe. It kind of puts you right in the middle of a smoky jazz club in in the 1970s and it's it's really great so yeah that's my uh, those are my five for 73. all right i'm gonna start my 73 speech by talking about how much i love houses of the holy but couldn't get it into my top five um basically because the artists that i'm going to illuminate my top five i kind of think a lot of these are their best albums i have closing time by tom waits as well i'm kind of in the same boat with you i like tom waits a good bit but if he didn't have this album i wouldn't like his quite as much this i think is easily his best stuff. I've also got my probably my favorite Bowie album, Aladdin Sane. I don't think that one gets enough credit. I love every aspect of it. Also got Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which is Joe's winner by Elton John. And to talk more about Funeral for a Friend, mentioning the synthesizers coming in heavy for this year and for this song. This song is probably a top five all-time song for me. I did a 20, in 2011, I did a top song list, and I think this was around number six or seven. It's probably gained a couple spots since then. My other album is gonna be The Who, Quadrophenia, but the best album and my favorite of 1973 is Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. And their dealings with stressed envelope to David. Is the grand prize win. Believe the hype, I absolutely love it. You know, it's a classic album, the t-shirts everywhere. A lot of people are probably sick of this pick, but it's there for a reason, it's awesome. The imagination in the studio is terrific and it's not just studio work, it's, you know, tying into just kind of the concept of the album, which is kind of up to your discretion to kind of figure out what it means to you. To me, it's kind of this big kind of like vision, cosmic vision quest of like finding yourself and kind of deciding who you are. And kind of, it's, I think it's also a big part about just sanity. You've got things like, you know, a, a us versus them feel and greed and power and time kind of playing into, you know, where you kind of feel like you fit into the universe. But that's just my take. And that's kind of the beauty of the album is it's, it's very vague and you kind of just got to get into it, get soaked into it and kind of just see how you feel about it. And I loved it even when I was younger, when I had no idea what I thought about it. I just thought it sounded awesome because it sounds awesome. It is absolutely terrific. Really cool drum work by Nick Mason. A lot of different time signatures, really nice jazz influence and David Gilmore, 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 Gilmore. Give me more Gilmore. He is so good. One of the best feels of a non-blues guitar player in history is found in this album. It's fantastic. It's just great. Believe the hype. I don't know what else to say about it. Everyone knows Dark Side. What do I have to say about it? It's fantastic. So yeah, any closing thoughts on 73, boys? It was a great year for music. And any year with The Who, Zeppelin, Elton John, Stevie Wonder, David Bowie, Pink Floyd, like all in one year is just kind of blows my mind to think about <laughs> that happening. Yeah. Uh, we got Let's Get It On by Marvin Gaye too. Maybe yeah. 
one of my favorite sounding records ever. I think it's sounds amazing. Also, my favorite Sabbath record came out in 73, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, couldn't crack my top five. Uh, Aerosmith debuts with a pretty good record um, this year. I mean, it's not their best, but it's pretty good. It's a good debut. Desperado, Leonard Skinner's debut, which is great. My favorite Alice Cooper album. All, I wanted all of these on here. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> You're welcome, America, for us doing it for you. Let us know what you think of our lists. Give us your lists, any big time albums we missed. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and hit the bell for notifications. We will see you in 1974, which will be a good year as well. So from Jason, Joe, and myself, have a great year. We'll see you in 74.